Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I've done uh, with the QuickJS. But before I jump into that topic, I would like to recap what's done, what was done last time in a previous video. So in previous video, I showed you how you can uh, create bindings for the shared libraries uh, such as FLTK, and then wrap. Uh, C calls with JavaScript calls and use uh, uh, FLTK, which is a graphical toolkit uh, framework inside uh, from QuickJS. So then I played with the parser, the C parser, and the way how to automatically generate bindings. And I had a, uh, I have a good uh, progress there. So then I realized something. I was able at one moment to automatically generate bindings for FLTK and uh, LibUV. FLTK is the graphical uh, toolkit uh, for creating your desktop apps. Uh, and LibUV is a library for doing, doing asynchronous things. And Node.js is basically based on uh, LibUV. Then I realized the whole process is so hard. I would need to write documentation and then there's so many places where you can, uh, where something can go wrong. So I decided actually to create the something like virtual environment uh, in we and also packet manager uh, from which you can uh, bootstrap your project, install packages and so on. But uh, I, don't, I didn't want to create the something like the python virtual environment neither something like the node packet manager i just wanted something in between so uh we can we can create the new uh, quickjs based project and install the requirements and from there continue working so that's exactly what i'm going to show you today Let's say you want to create the new project. So you just create QJS, for example, demo zero. Then you go inside with the terminal and then uh, find GitHub, the repository called QJS N. There you'll find the instructions what to do. You need, uh, you need to download this QJS N file and make it executable inside of your project. From there, you'll need to, and just when you download it, that's it. So after that, you'll need to initialize environment. So uh, what is actually happening right now, the QuickJS is being downloaded in background in the, and being compiled. And once it's compiled, it's a binary QJS and QJSC, which is compiler, they both will be copied here in the project. Uh, you don't have to follow by git uh, qjs env neither uh, binaries but it, but it's up to you to decide anyway i wouldn't do that it's the same way we don't follow for example not not modules or vm in python that's why we don't follow this so after this as you can see you have qjs in this case REPL, and qjsc which is compiler compile your JavaScript into single file executable. It doesn't have to be single file, but okay. So after that, uh, let's install, the, for example, there are a couple of packages currently uh, available. QuickJS CFFI, which is automatic uh, wrapper for the C libraries. So QJS end, but then we say add, we specify the name of the package, and then we specify the location from where we want to download that file, uh, download that uh, project. And automatically QJS end will clone and execute. Uh, there is something called, show you there is something called QJS package, which should exist in all of these uh, packages. And it has a couple of functions, prepare, build, install, and uninstall. In prepare, basically we set up the, the, the library, we clone, 
we fetch the sub modules, do some patching, whatever. In the build process, we just build. In the install process, we copy stuff. And in uninstall, that's when we, when you uh, try to uninstall the package. So uh, just to tell you, install doesn't install in the system-wide uh, directories. It's actually locally contained and it's installed, installed inside of the local, as you can see here. So we have a couple of things. Uh, the, the thing, important thing here to know, to mention, QuickJS CFFI is actually based on Python 3.9 and uh, PyC parser. Uh, so as you see, I basically combined the Python and, uh, and JavaScript to automatically create these bindings for uh, QuickJS that interact with the C libraries. So after we are done with that, uh, let's just confirm that we have a new file, QJS CFFI, yes, which we can use right now uh, to wrap uh, whatever C library we want. And the first one, I want to show you how it's done. So this is automatic bind generator. I'll write, uh, I'll wrap the FLTK. So in this process, the previously installed uh, CFFI will be used to actually, so right now we are cloning the CFLTK, which is the C wrapper for the C++, C++ FLTK. And then we are going to use our QGS CFFI to actually uh, generate the bindings automatically. And after it's done, if you go to local, you should have your QGS FLTK CFFI and here or all files generated. For example, we have a single file with almost yeah, 9,000 uh, functions covered. What we also do here, we also now export uh, the size of uh, objects. Uh, we also export uh, the enums, uh, struct, uh, unions, and so forth. After we are done with that one, let's try to run actually the some example. And I'll copy from the cache. By the way, when you try to install something, it's first uh, built inside of the cache and then copied from here. Only what's required in the install process here. So only the minimal things are copied. Uh, after installing, you can always remove cache. That's up to you. So now let's copy from cache QuickJS FLTK CFFI example FLTK hello JS to local file FLTK hello. Great. And now I'm going to call it QuickJS and I'll say FLTK hello JS. And if we are successful and we are, we should get the, the demo running and it works. Great. There is one more demo I want to show you. Uh, it's called Lex. Last time I didn't include that one. QJS FLTK Lex. All right. So this is similar to Flexbox in uh, HTML, CSS. So you have it right now, and it's the back. Uh, it's the layout manager for the desktop apps. Now let's continue. Uh, this is really interesting thing. You know, in a quick JS, you don't have a set timeout, a set interval. You also, you, because you don't have the event loop. Uh, what I want to show you right now, I will use uh, CFFI to wrap libuv and libuv is actually the library that used for the asynchronous programming. So it's libuv is a multi-platform uh, support library with a Poxon asynchronous IO. But what it also has, it has this, it has timers. You know, so using timers, we can create the set timeout and the uh, set interval and so on. So without further ado, in one command, again, we install the, we install the UV, uh 
libuv shared library and also we automatically generate the bindings as in previous examples example when we use FOTK. Uh, all of these steps are actually automated if you want to see how they work uh, check uh, check uh, qjs env and also check uh, these qjs package files inside of the inside of the libraries that i'm just installing so they all have these four standard functions prepare build install and uninstall if you want to create your own there is a sample qjs package sh uh, so this does nothing it's just the template that you should use if you want to create your own package all right this is done so now let's actually uh, also test so what we're gonna test right now it will be a timeout and what this timeout does is following so basically we implement set timeout and set uh, clear timeout set interval and clear interval so we can use them as we normally do uh, this is non-existent in the uh, QuickJS because QuickJS is just a JavaScript engine, uh, really capable, but it doesn't have event loop. And the whole point is, is not to have the event loop and not to interact with these kind of things, but we can always include one. So uh, let's see how this works. So now run this code. And it worked. So this is it. Uh, I just showed you how you can create the QuickJS environment, uh, which will automatically download the, the latest QuickJS. Uh, QuickJS SFFI, which is the, the, the QuickJS JavaScript binding for the C code. Then we uh, automatically generated FOTK bindings and also uh, leave UV bindings, and I show you the both examples. Uh, next thing will be to allow, to actually write the library, probably it's gonna be called the QuickJS NPM, uh, which will uh, allow us to install the NPM libraries uh, locally, so we can use them. Uh, this will play us nice, probably for all pure javascript libraries uh, but in case you need to compile against the node.js uh, i don't think this will work uh, anyway that's not the whole that's not the point the point is just to allow some to allow uh the, the all libraries which are pure pure J, pure javascript to actually work from within the quickjs and to have some simple uh, uh, simple package manager because quickjs and it's not package manager it's environment management manager with some basic dependencies that you need to bootstrap your environment such as cffi and you know that's i think that's the, the only one which is important if you want to really interact with existing c uh, c uh, applications so this is all for today's video i hope you enjoyed and i hope you liked the, the, the tutorial that i did let me know in comments uh, what would you like to see next uh, i'll definitely test this on a bsd free bsd for beginning and then tell you how it went but i don't expect any issues see you soon goodbye